Modern Creatives Podcast. I'm your host, Ali Coots, and joining me today is polymer clay artist, Caitlin Gulch. Thanks Hello. for joining me. Yes, I'm so excited. This is this has been my like week. I've been so excited for today. Like, it's just amazing. I am equally excited to have you on and cannot thank you enough for joining me. I'm a huge fan of your work. I love your jewelry. It's adorable. Thank you. <laughs> I love that. That's the, that's why I do this. <laughs> yeah. And well, in your jewelry, your booth setup, because I remember the first market the first market I ever did is where I met you That's and w- which one? Megan. Yeah. Megan was hosting it. Yeah. That was the very first market I had ever done. And I was like, holy shit, look at this person's you like, your booth was amazing. Your jewelry. I was like, this person's like got their shit together. <laughs> I, knew. I thought you were cool as shit. I was like, <laughs> Be friends, like let's make this happen. You are so cool down to earth. So it is equally right back at you. <laughs> That's too funny. Oh my gosh. And I yeah, so anyways, it's been gosh, two years now, maybe or something. And and oh, so there. finally got you on the pod. Oh, yeah. And I'm pumped to talk about your business X's and O's, especially yeah. about the name and name. <laughs> what it's like to be a polymer clay jewelry maker. So yeah. thanks again for being on. Of course, I'm here for it. This is so exciting. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm a little out of it today, so I apologize. <laughs> I'm like tr- trying to pull it together. <laughs> hey, you're good. You got this. We got it together. I keep saying exciting, so I don't know. I do too. I do too. It's it's I it's the word I use the most. I think. It, it, yeah, it's terrible. I know. Seriously, I say, or seriously, my mm-hmm. husband says to be honest, and I catch myself saying to be honest all the time. I'm I like, say I'm like saying that, Justin. I say like a lot, like, like, mm-hmm. like, like a lot. It's so bad. It's so bad. Okay. I love you. This is no, really, this is chill. So chill. <laughs> like, here's to you. Good morning. Yay. Yay. <laughs> More coffee is needed. Coffee. Mm. So to start with, I'm curious as to how you got into polymer clay jewelry and kind of what inspired you to start working with with that. Yeah, that's a great question. So I've always been fascinated with clay. So Mm -hmm. as a kid, my mom used to take me to ceramic classes. I remember it so vividly. I remember the building. I remember the lady. I remember the setup. Mm -hmm. And that was like my safe place. Clay was like a soothing mechanism for me. I have ADHD. I've struggled with it since a kid, since I was a kid. And it used to be such a negative thing to the point where I felt like nobody ever wanted to do anything or my worth, like just stuff mm-hmm. like that as a kid, you should not be worrying about that, you know? Mm-hmm. So like whenever I would go into the studio and just sit there and make stuff, me as the hype, crazy kid would thrive there. Mm-hmm. And like, I was like a star. I don't know. It was just, it was just such a great feeling. So just the soothing mechanism of it, the hands to like the clay, it just like calms me. That's how I got into clay, but like jewelry, essentially my grandmother, I don't know if you knew she passed a couple months ago and like, I made a collection. Yeah. I made like this, it was a spring collection dedicated towards her. Um, Yeah. She passed away in April of this year. And yeah, it's, it's okay. She's, she was a great lady. And mm. I always remember her because she always, she lived up in Ohio and my mom and my sister and I used to go up there and she would always have this jewelry box, a huge jewelry box full of like earrings, necklaces, rings. And she would always give us a piece. I still have all of them. Oh my gosh. I love yeah. that. So when she passed away, I got all of her jewelry. But before any of that, I think my like addiction to jewelry came like, <laughs> because of her. You know, mm-hmm. and my mom's the same way. My mom wears, see, I don't wear all the jewelry, but I wear like specific ones. My mom, she'll go all out. Oh, you know, wow. she loves jewelry. So I feel like I've always had a connection with jewelry and then the clay aspect of it. I actually started it in 2020 when COVID hit. I was like really down, depressed. Mm-hmm. And it just kind of like happened. And I sold a couple pieces on Facebook and I was in the dental field, sold a couple. And I'm like, hmm, this could be a thing. <laughs> 
ago. <laughs> oh my God. So you started in 2020. So that means when we met, you had just got started. Started. Wow. Because yeah. yeah. you were so like polished and like, oh, no, okay. no, not on the inside. <laughs> I'm like just sitting here like a flabbergasted. I'm like, whoa. Because I mean, everything was like so well done and so well put together. Like, True. Ugh, I try. I'm a perfectionist when it comes to like how I how I see a picture is like I will work so hard on it. And like even when I show it, I'm still like, oh, I could do that a little bit better. Like I'm never 100 percent like set on something. But then you hear from other people and you're just like, oh, OK, see, they loved that. So like mm -hmm. I can do this, you know, like I've yeah. never I've always had self-doubt. I've always, I've never had that person to push me until I met my husband and him. Oh my God. Support <laughs> system. You need a support system. <laughs> oh, I love sure. that. Yeah. And he's my support system. You met him. He helped me at pop-ups. Like he would sit there for hours oh, and, yeah, yeah. and he would help me with my setup. Like he would take his whole Saturday off to come and help me live my dream, which is oh, huge. Yeah. That's so great. That's <laughs> <laughs> and that's a, that's a, something I hear kind of frequently from other like makers and stuff is is having that like support system and that person who will come up and be like kind of like your hype your hype man like in the corner like yeah it helped this. so much because I never had that growing up mm. I I really didn't I know I talked about my mom earlier but like we don't have like I didn't have that mother daughter relationship like I went mm. to dance because. My sister and I, like, we wanted to do stuff. So she would send us there, not saying she was a bad mom at all. But I didn't have that, like, you can do it, Caitlin. Mm. You, if you could set your mind to it, you can do it. My husband is that for me. So, like, I, I've seen both sides. And I'm not saying you can't do it whenever you don't have that support system. Mm. That, will, that will push you. But, yeah. like, having that support system is amazing. Like, I just, I wish everybody could, could have that, you know, like it just, just makes a huge difference. Yeah. And it makes you believe in yourself. It, it, you, you can't believe in yourself, but having that support system just makes it easier. It's, I, oh my gosh, your story, oh. it, it like adds so much more to the, the story behind the jewelry and yeah. how you got into clay and eventually polymer clay. Like so cool that it, that you kind of had that passion from such a young age and like well, it was something you enjoyed. Yeah. I would always like do like DIYs. Like I mm. would, I took so many classes in high school where they would teach you how to make things. I made thongs one time. Like what? <laughs> in high school, like I made thongs. I remember doing that. I made bags. I made pillowcases. Like wow. I made all this stuff and I loved doing it. And I really never like knew that you could, you can support yourself on your creative aspect and, mm. and that do what you love. Like that's, that's what it's all about. It really is. Mm -hmm. If you get up every morning and say, I know that I'm going to be successful. I know that this can be a thing and I can do this. My creative aspect, you can do anything really. Do you, so do you do art like full time now or do yeah. you? Oh yeah. Gosh. So I was in, yeah. When I met you, I actually was still in dental. Uh, I thought that's what I thought. And I, I remember us, I think we had a conversation about, cause I think you were on the verge or you were still, you, you, you were thinking about maybe going full time, but weren't so, quite there yet. Yeah. So when I, you're saying when I first met you, mm -hmm. so when I first met you, of course, I like, I wanted to make this a thing because I, I want to say that pop-up market that I met you was probably like my fourth one. Mm. That year. And I just had started in July and then I did some with triangle pop up. I probably did like three or three. And I want to say Megan's was the fourth one. Mm -hmm. And I, of course, like I wanted to make that thing because I loved meeting people. I yeah. loved connecting with them. I loved hearing their stories. I love to see like somebody pour their heart out on a piece and you can just see it and feel it. And then you mm -hmm. see them selling it and you know, you get it because you're also doing that. Like mm -hmm. it's just love. It's, there's a love there, you know? So of course I wanted to do that then, but I never thought I could. So I stayed at a dental office that I could, it was the most unhealthy time in my life. Like oh, no. it, I was, it was very a conservative Christian office and nothing wrong with that, but it was, there was a lot of judgment towards me and it was just uh... not a healthy scenario. So then I went to another dental office 
The environment there was amazing. I was like, okay, this is great. I can sell and do this at the same time. But something still wasn't there. Something was not connecting. And I could never figure it out. I still, to this day, I, mm-hmm. I don't understand like why, but now I see the bigger picture. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm-hmm. So January of 20 of this year, 2022, mm-hmm. I got a dental job. And I pursued this full time. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> I wish I had a soundboard so I could do like <laughs> cheers. <laughs> right? Yes. The horn. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> yes. So yeah, I, I do that. And it's, don't get oh, me wrong. It's so exciting. It's the most challenging but rewarding thing I've ever done. It's I've terrifying. Heard, I thought I was like, I'm 30, I'll be 32 this year. I thought like, okay, I'm at my peak when I was 30. Like, cause that's when I started to realize, okay, like let's make this jewelry a thing. And I just mm-hmm. busted my butt. I would go to pop-ups on the weekends. I worked full time. I, I, it was just, it was a lot. The hustle, yeah. yeah. And I mean, a lot of other things went into play and why I quit dental. I got a herniated disc at 30. Like who gets the herniated disc? When <laughs> <laughs> Gulch gets the herniated disc at 30. Just on you, boo. Just kidding. <laughs> It was a in disguise because I quit. I couldn't feel my hand. So I was oh like, God. am I going to hold instruments? Yeah, it just, it was too much. And so I, got, I started going to like physical therapy, a chiropractor, and I got mobility and full, like I can feel. So mm-hmm. sorry, dog, Charlie wanted to say hi. I don't know if you heard. I, listen, like, like I said, we love a good podcast pup. So yeah, I might have to get up and her to stop, but we'll see. He's um, all good. She's all good. <laughs> cool. So I got some mobility and I can feel, I mean, it's still, it's not the same. I used to play sports and I can't Mm. really, which is really sad. So I like fully went into like my jewelry business and I was just like hustling real hard. I wish you could play that song. Right. (laughs) Just like a a 15 second clip. We'll we'll insert it. I've never wanted to have like a soundboard and music so badly as I do for this episode. Yeah, I hope you don't cut that out. Absolutely app. not. <laughs> it's all staying. Sorry. Yeah. So I just, I hustled hard mm-hmm. and I, it's been having its ups and downs. I sell in a store, the Curate, which is like Triangle Pop-Up Market. They have their own store in downtown Raleigh and I've been there for over a year. Oh, and it's, nice. Yeah, it's been really successful there. I also sell at Willow Salon in Durham. My girl, Taylor, amazing hairstylist. Everyone should go check her out. I can drop her name to the two places too. So Absolutely. Yeah, it's just, it's been really, really good. And I did freckled honeys for a really long time. Well, I say a very long time, but it was, it was like six months I did that. Mm -hmm. And I found out like I want to continue with jewelry. I think that that is the best option for me Mm -hmm. personally with my personality and just how I thrive. And, and also like just how I see people. It's just, it's, it's a whole aspect of things. Like Mm -hmm. as an artist, I like, I grown and my art has grown and it's just, it's crazy to see like where I was and like, I had that support then and like where I am now. I just, I, it's just a dream. It really is a dream. That fact that I'm like, I just feel like I'm living it. <laughs> That's so cool. You are. I mean, you've like taken this thing that you were super passionate about from, I mean, you've combined things from your childhood, like mm-hmm. memory of your grandmother and then like have turned it into this kind of perfect career that you love. It's not perfect. It's not perfect. Okay. If you watch my videos for you, you know that I'm not perfect. And you know that I, I say the weirdest thing sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like (laughs) one time I like did not. Okay. I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but I'm going to say it one time. I didn't have any makeup on. I like had just been up from a nap and I'm like, I'm going to (laughs) record. phone and I the first thing I say I my voice even cracks because it's awful <laughs> come into your raw y'all oh god <laughs> what and I kept it I, I put it in there and I said this is me love me I love it love <laughs> Am I allowed to say in all of that or no? Absolutely. Okay. I'm going to keep it in. Like, it's amazing. <laughs> I'm going to do your, and I did not. 
it's the ADHD brain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's just... what it is. It really is. It's, it's, I have a filter, but I don't. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I love it though, because it's who you are. And it's like, you're just showing people like, this is me. This is what I do. This is what, is how so I am. Because when I was a kid, like I said, having ADHD was so, my mom, I'm sure she was so embarrassed. I told Santa <laughs> Claus he needed a breath mint. He asked, for <laughs> and I told him, I don't know, but you need a breath mint for Christmas. <laughs> my poor mom. So like, I, I but what I'm getting at is, <laughs> as a kid, oh my gosh. it's so bad. It was so looked down upon and like, mm-hmm. like, like this wild hype kid. And now I'm still that wild hype kid. And then you have people celebrating me, like Mm -hmm. loving who I am. And I'm, and it's mutual. Like it's just, that's what the art community is all about. And that's why I gravitate more towards that because I know there's other hype ass people who just will get me and I, and I don't have to change. I don't have to be somebody that I'm not because you know how hard that is. Yes. Oh my God. I'm going on a tangent. I'm not even following the. <laughs> no, I love it because it's, it's all the things that we want to talk about anyways. So you're what? like, you're ch- 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 checking them off the list, but nice. I did, I did want to know a little bit about kind of what your favorite thing is about making jewelry yeah. specifically. Yeah. So my husband, I was going mm-hmm. over a couple of things with him about just business stuff and he actually said it perfectly, and I'm going to steal it from him if that's okay. So, absolutely, I love that. Old Justin Gulch on here. <laughs> <laughs> so he said, "There's a piece of jewelry for everyone," and it's mm-hmm. true. Like, I, I mean, like you have jewelry on right now, right? Yeah, yep. I have jewelry on right now. Men wear jewelry when everybody can have a piece of jewelry, mm-hmm. and there's specific styles you can do. You can just do so much stuff with jewelry, and that's what I think I love. Because as a person, you can do so much to yourself. You can do Mm -hmm. so much like towards people. And it's all about like how you want to represent yourself, who you want to surround you in your life, what Mm -hmm. you want to do. It's literally all about like just love. And that's what I love about jewelry because everybody loves jewelry and there's a piece for everyone. Oh, yeah. I like that. I don't know. It's but it makes sense. It does. (laughs) Yeah, it's, it's, well, it's a way people, how they express themselves is you, they can do it through jewelry. So yeah, it's like a statement piece too. Like what I mean by that is my earrings are probably the first thing that you notice. And so if I don't know you and I see somebody who's wearing a jewelry that I like, I'm like, Oh, I love your necklace. Yeah. Oh, I love your bracelet. And it's a conversation starter. So like a statement piece. Mm-hmm. And that's also what I really like about it too it like breaks the ice almost. yeah yeah no I, I will do that often because I'm like socially awkward so I'll be like oh like look at their you know their earrings you can you can mm-hmm. comment about oh, their earrings something and that's something about like oh I could get into a whole conversation <laughs> about how to approach customers like people who stand by their booths and don't say anything and it's mm-hmm. not that you're not approachable it's just like you gotta you gotta be the first person if you want them to come to you you gotta yeah. be the first person to go get them mm-hmm. I'm not faking it by any means when I say oh I like your shoes yeah. or oh, like I'm being sincere because and I do it all the time like I just I I want to be nice to everybody and mm-hmm. I I would want someone to compliment me on something that I spend a lot of money on or that I take pride in wearing, you Absolutely, know? Absolutely. Yeah. So it's not that I'm faking it by any means. It's more of a, Hey, I really do like this. You seem like a cool person. Let's chat. You yeah. Know? Open the conversation. Yeah. And you, you have a really fun way of, so your shop is called X's and O's mm-hmm. <laughs> and you have a pretty interesting way of naming your jewelry pieces I which do. I love it was one of the things that again when I when we first met I was like this is brilliant <laughs> a couple people don't think so to be honest really I, yeah I feel like recently I've gotten a lot of negative feedback on it but guess what it's not their store <laughs> exactly There's other jewelry artists that you can buy from if you really don't like my name but that's not the point <laughs> They can get the fuck out. No. Yeah, they can get the people in the back. <laughs> and so tell us a little bit about how you name your jewelry. Yeah, so 
when I first started this two years ago, I had no idea I wanted what I wanted to name it, but I didn't want to just be like Kate's clay or just Mm. like, I'm not saying anything's wrong with like a, I don't want to call it a basic name because your name is your name and it's unique, you know, but I wanted something that people were going to remember because I, I'm like an introvert, but also an extrovert. Mm -hmm. Like I don't like all the attention on me sometimes, but like, I want you to remember me, you know, I don't be forgettable. I mean, like, come on, who wants, who wants to be like that? You know, I was actually sleeping one night and in the middle of the night, I woke up in the, like, (laughs) sleep and I was like, what if I named my earrings after people's exes? <laughs> and I called my sister the next day and we were like, X's and O's, like the song and spell it X's and O's. So I say, I name my earrings after people's exes. I'm like the Taylor Swift of earrings. <laughs> I love it so much. And you can wear them like they wore you out, sister friend. <sighs> Oh my God. I, I It makes me so happy every time. I'm just like, yes. So I used to advertise it a lot and a, mm-hmm. lot of, a lot of people liked it, but I don't know. The more that I grew, it's not that I'm not proud of that name. It's people know it now and I don't have mm-hmm. to really like say. Advertise it as much. Like savage. I do. Like when people come in my booth, I'm at a pop-up and I actually like start to talk to them and they get to know me and there's like an actual conversation there. Mm-hmm. I'll just be like, yeah, that one's the snake. He's the Evan. He's my last ex. I named my <laughs> <laughs> Those over there are the, are the Daves. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then people will be like, oh my God, I want a custom order. And I only because I want to name an earring. I'm like, okay, well, what's your <laughs> name? Get them in. <laughs> oh, it's so, it's such a cool and smart, like business aspect I guess or something you know it's I don't know it's just so unique and I love it like Thanks. well it I was people name earrings after like I hear girl names all the time right oh yeah yeah and I'm not saying and I'm not saying anything's wrong with that because to be honest when I first started it was all just female names I don't mm-hmm. I don't even know like I wasn't even thinking and mm-hmm. then I was like okay that looks bad I'm not trying to be like that you know like I just so I started incorporating men's names. And so actually, no, it was backwards. Sorry. Let me start over. It was all men's names, not women's names. Mm. So like my first couple earrings were the Dallas, the Jameson, Dusty, and Evan. We'll just use those four. And mm-hmm. all my exes holler. <laughs> <at me. laughs> Poor fucking Dustin, man. Um, this is what he has to deal with. I mean, I um, love it. Whatever. And then I was like, I need to start using girl names because obviously yeah. you can date more than men. Yeah. Um, I'm, I am fully supportive of that. I mm-hmm. have pride earrings, which I actually have some right here. Did you see my ones with the, <gasps> with the, the fringe? Yes. They're like clouds. That's mm-hmm. the thing. I'm so excited for them. I love them. So I cool. did see them and I was like, so I started incorporating mm-hmm. women's names and so it's both men and women's names. I love it. Yeah. I think I had noticed that too the last time I, not the last time, but when I saw your shop again, I was like, oh, look. Yeah. We've got like, and we've got a little more, we've got men and women. Mm-hmm. It, it, I don't know. It made me I very happy. I that don't have really, like the Black Lives Matter one, it's just the BLM. Mm. So there are some. And at some point, I don't know, I'm going to continue with the names, but like, the collect I'm doing collections now. So like that's mm. a thing for me. And I feel like that's been great. So if you're a, a jewelry seller or even, I mean, stickers, like you could just do like a collection sell. Yeah. It's just amazing. It's one of the best things I, I tell you, I can go on tangents about this. No, I love it. I mean, I, I, I've kind of started doing that with stickers where I'll like pick a design aspect that I really like. So I'll do like a geometric series yep. and just run them for like a short amount of time. And then, then that's it. They're gone. Yeah. And they're gone. They're gone. Yep. <laughs> but then you bring them back up and they still sell. <laughs> Cause you gotta wait a little while. <laughs> oh my gosh. So something else. I wanted to touch on a little bit was where your inspiration comes for like design aspects of your jewelry. Like, do you, do you, I guess, like kind of study 
jewelry or is it all just kind of you just make what you love and put it out there yeah when I started I really only thought about polymer clay you know Mm. so I would like watch videos on how to like condition clay even though I already knew how plus I had dogs which I don't recommend doing clay or resin (laughs) around pets that fed so much hair (laughs) and I had pieces that I'm like I can't sell this shit there's there's Charlie DNA in this I can't do that oh no (laughs) so I mean anyways I started with polymer clay and I started watching videos and following like polymer clay artists and stuff like that to get inspiration not copy but get inspiration Mm -hmm. obviously shapes are going to be the same but if you copy the exact design then yeah I don't know (laughs) <laughs> yeah. So I started doing that. And what really got me like inspired, I would say, is just my feelings, cool. diving deep into what I'm feeling. I also feel like environment plays a huge role and mm. just also the seasons. Like right now I'm doing, I kind of, I still am doing polymer clay, but I'm adding more of a gold resin and actually mm. real pressed flowers. Like I get a yeah. So I had I got some from Amazon, but I'm starting to actually press my own flowers. Oh, very I cool. Plants. I have a fern earring that I'm really excited to drop. Ooh, gold to it. Yeah. So it's and it's just because outside it's just so beautiful right now. It mm-hmm. is. I, I'm in my sunroom and just like the sun coming through the trees. It's like it it gives you so much energy and just makes you love life. So oh, I love people love their earrings <laughs> so I just I don't know it's between my my feelings a combination between my feelings and just seasonal I would say just nice one thing I love about clay side note is mm. or just jewelry in general you can accidentally make something mm. so one time I was supposed to make these earrings and I forgot to cut off a piece of it and I baked it and I was like oh shit what am I gonna do and I added something to it and it is my best seller Oh, that's a, that's amazing. <laughs> you can always take something from your past. Oh, I sound like my father. He he says this shit all this stuff like this all the time. I'm like, you can take your past and you can work with it. You can work with it. You can make it. You can change it and make it work. Oh my God. I'm turning it to my father. I'm gonna say we all eventually turn into our parents, right? Oh. Ooh. 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 Sure. <laughs> right? I'm like, no. <laughs> I don't want to do that. (laughs) So last question before we start to wrap up, what's something that you've learned about yourself through your art journey? Yeah, I feel like artists, well, nowadays in art, if you want to be successful, you have to do social media. I feel Mm -hmm. like it's a given. So one thing I've learned is that it's not just your art aspect of it. Of course, that's where you start. But you spend about, I want to say, more than 60% of your time doing other things than creating your what you're selling. Mm-hmm. So whether that's marketing, selling, taking photos, all this stuff, you're literally a one-man show. And you can mm-hmm. get other people. That's hard. Side note. It is. I find out I only can work for myself unless it's for mm-hmm. my husband, like with my husband. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was a learning curve. So I learned that about myself, I grew into knowing who I am as a person and knowing Mm -hmm. it's beautiful. It might not be beautiful to some people, but it doesn't mean that it's not beautiful. Mm -hmm. But going back to what I was saying about all the other duties that you have, I know that I'm capable of all of these things. You just have to put your mind to it. And I never learned that until now. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I, I love that I'm still growing and blossoming and I get to meet fun people like you Yay. and I would have never met you if I, if I didn't do this. And that would be so sad. <laughs> That's what markets are for, man. Like our I love maker market. community is so awesome. Yes. I will say, I feel like if I was anywhere else other than the area that we're all in, I, I would be, it just, it wouldn't be fun. Like mm-hmm. I North Carolina is so fun and I don't, want to move other places I would love to stay in North Carolina now if that ever happened cool but I don't think our the art community would be the same I don't know yeah. what it is. I've gone to a couple markets in other states and it's just not the same it's more competition yeah. rather than yeah. community yes yes and that's hard too that that mm-hmm. itself is hard because you will you will meet people 
who it's all about competition. Yeah. And that's nothing against you. It's all how you hold yourself together. Well, that's like, I have to remind myself every now and then, because like I'll, when I was doing markets last year, I'd get put sometimes next to like other sticker people and I'd be like, oh, that's not your fault. It. That's the <laughs> fault. They, they should never. Yeah. That's but it, they created that competition. Yeah. But I'm always like, you know what? Instead of like getting weird about it or being like super competitive, why not just go and support them and buy some of their stickers and like, that's why you're a great person. Talk to them. Yes, that's <laughs> huge. You have got to talk to the people who are in markets beside you because yes. that's how the art community grows. It's not all about competition. And I mean, I even feel like people who have different products mm. are competitive with people who are beside them that have nothing to do with their product. Yeah. Yeah. And so you're, you're right. You're right in all aspects of it. Go be the bigger person, say hi. And, and you will, you will be surprised at how kind people are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, the, oh my gosh. I've had so many amazing conversations with people at markets. Like it's, yeah. it's one of the reasons why I started the podcast because it's yeah. people have amazing stories and they do it's mm-hmm. just ugh, the coolest stuff. So it's beautiful. I love it. Love markets so much. Yeah. So as we as we start to wrap up, first off, Caitlin, this has been amazing. I have enjoyed myself so much. I could talk to you for days. I know. We'll have to. I'll have to have you on for another episode for sure. I would love that. Anytime. Oh, awesome. Yes. Is there any? Do you have anything coming up that you want to plug or any like new jewelry you're dropping soon? Yeah. So I'm currently working on a lot of floral stuff. Real pressed flowers is a mm. huge thing in, in my collection with metal like I stated before. I have a couple pop-up markets coming up and I'll put them on my Instagram page and O's underscore studio which I think you're going to put on there. Mm. But I do have a pop-up on August 14th in Cary with Food and Flea. Go follow them. Yeah. So I'm really excited about that and I I mean I'm kind of like open to a lot of things. I'm doing a lot of selling in stores like I said. I do a lot of custom orders too. So if anybody wants nice. a custom order, they can like DM me or send me an email. Yeah. I, I just want people to be in love with their jewelry. I feel like I, when I, before I started doing this, I can never find jewelry that I would like wear all the time. And you see me right now, I got like sweatpants and this on, but I have my flower earrings yeah, on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I'm making a lot of things, trying new things. I, I want to start making bolo ties I think that's an interesting centerpiece. so that's coming soon love that I'm kind of just exploring a lot of things like I don't want x's and o's just to be one thing it's mm-hmm. just crafted jewelry for right now and it's a studio so why not <laughs> I love that I, bolo ties oh. yeah I wore one for my wedding and <sighs> my grandfather's so that's where I get the inspiration from him and and his wife Aww. That's the one who did the ear. Who was the earring queen? She was a dirty bird. She used to. <laughs> she was a dirty grandma. <laughs> you wonder where I get my personality from. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> she was a hoot. hoot. Oh anyway, my at my wedding, so I'm 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 incorporating it. God, that's so cool. Yeah, oh, I love that so much. Again, I can't thank you enough for being on Caitlin and and I will be sure to put Caitlin's information in the episode description so you can follow her on Instagram X's and O's underscore studio and visit her website which is X's and O's studio.com and again I'll put that in the episode description so you can find it and definitely check out her stuff and follow along and And if you have an ex that you want an earring named after holler at me (laughs) yes let her know and then oh my gosh it's so much fun Mm. (laughs) i'm like "Hmm, i'll have to think of some exes names (laughs) i I show you not everybody asked me side note Corey, in this every time at a pop-up market they're like you have so many exes i'm like honey yes 70 percent of these exes are mine but there's 25 percent that are not (laughs) Harry, <laughs> honey, you're just like yes, welcome, yes. welcome. <laughs> all mine. <laughs> all right, I love this so much. Thank you. Oh my gosh, and I would like to thank Caitlin again for being on today's episode, and I would like to thank the listeners. Thank you for tuning in. 
If you have questions or comments for me or for any of my guests, including Caitlin, you can text and call us on our hotline. It's 252-419-6004. And we will include them in a future episode of the podcast. So again, you can text us, call us, leave a voicemail, and we will feature you on the podcast. And you can also follow us on Instagram at Wandering Creatives Pod. And be sure to like, rate, review the podcast wherever you're listening. And until next week, stay creative. Adios. (laughs) 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 Thanks for listening to the Wandering Creatives Podcast, a CEI media production. Please like, rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast as it helps us greatly. You can follow us on Instagram at Wandering Creatives Pod and on Facebook at Wandering Creatives Podcast. If you would like to support the podcast, you can become a Patreon for just $5 a month. The link is in the episode description.